Hey everybody, before we start the podcast today, we just wanted to say thank you for 50 episodes. We wouldn't have gotten this far if it wasn't for people liking and subscribing and commenting. So here we are at 50. We just finished the live stream. So if you didn't catch it, you can catch it this upcoming Saturday, hopefully. I can get it up there in time. And anything, Caleb, you want to say? Just thanks for not being super mean to me. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm really sensitive. No, but like seriously, like because because like I'm not like a super huge like fanboy of Star Trek and it's been fun to like go through and watch it. And nobody's been like super mean about it, you know? Yeah. I know how Star Wars guys are about stuff. Like if you're like, oh well, if you you like that, well, you're an idiot. Uh-huh. It's been nice that I've uh, just been able to watch it and have fun. I've been enjoying it, and I'm going to watch a lot more Star Trek. And I'm going to watch a lot less Star Trek. <laughs> Thanks for everything, guys. Enjoy the podcast. Enjoy it. Watch it. Watch it. Hey, I'm Will, and I love Star Trek. I'm Caleb, and I love Fallout. And we're watching Star Trek chronologically so that this guy over here can love Star Trek just like me. Yeah, maybe. So let's get into the review, dudes. (laughs) Risk. Risk is our business. That'll be. It was founded to seek out new life. Well, there it sits. Oh, 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 oh. Rock and roll. Six. We're not afraid of diversity. We don't persecute it. We embrace it. At least I won't die alone. planets and reach for the stars those were the days program complete enter when ready welcome back to another re-trek review where each week we talk about star trek and this week we're talking about episode five of season one of star trek the animated series that episode is entitled more tribbles more troubles Mo it origi- tribbles. <laughs> Mo problems. Mo problems. <laughs> <laughs> it first aired October 6, 1973. It was written by David Gerald, who also wrote The Trouble with Tribbles. Nice. Same guy. And of course, it was directed by Hal Sutherland. The synopsis for More Tribbles, More Troubles is Cyrano Jones introduces Tribbles that cannot reproduce. Yeah. So that is our introduction. But before we go on to comments and subscribers, let's hear what Caleb thought of the episode. Well, so what I thought of the episode was that it was very enjoyable. I I did like it. I was kind of disappointed at first because it literally was just like, Hey, we're doing the same thing. <laughs> we're bringing, okay. we're bringing this grain again, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" You know, for this to be like an animated series, I thought this episode worked very well for like the younger audience. Yes. So yeah. I, I like that. I thought that was enjoyable. Um, my only real complaint about this episode was that it's just that. Cyrano Jones was not in the shuttle when it blew up. That's my only. That's a complaint. <laughs> he is such a he is such an unlike character. <laughs> he's just such an idiot. I mean, he's rough. Oh, he's just such an idiot. <laughs> you know, Kirk's like, hey, so you're basically wanted for like all these crimes. And he's like, oh, I don't know anything you're talking about, Captain. <laughs> Come to find out, like, he stole stuff from the Klingons. Oh, yeah. And he, 
no idea why they're shooting it. Oh my god. He's like, oh, well, why? Well, you can't take that away from me. Captain's like, well, you you stole it, idiot. <laughs> so like, we're just gonna like let the Klingons kill you, or or you're gonna go to Starfleet prison? I guess we'll just let the Klingons kill you. Oh, well, I guess <laughs> I'll have to find a different jacket with more pockets in it. <laughs> To keep his. Yeah, he's he's a real unlikable character. He just he's just too too stupid to be in Star Trek for me. I don't know. It just kind of mm-hmm. a lot of Star Trek is really grounded, and then there's this guy who's just just really out there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, he's like a space merchant smuggler, and it's like, yeah, but he's not <laughs> he's not cool though, you no. know? Like usually those guys are are cool, <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a weird I don't know he's just a weird person yeah it's like George Lucas saw Cyrano Jones and was like hey so what if we made smugglers completely different <laughs> <laughs> mm, and that's why he wrote like Han <laughs> <laughs> alright before we get into review let's do comments and subscribers so our two latest subscribers are Ken Manel and Corey Spang. Mm. Thanks for subscribing. Yeah. And then we have some comments. So <laughs> two comments. Oh, yeah. We have two comments on our previous podcast, the Lorelei Signal. Mm. Um, an interesting one. It says Mambu likes pretty ladies taking <laughs> Kirk man energy. That's what he gets for surviving Mambu's bite. Yeah, it's true. Yep, it's true. Mambu is not a fan of Kirk. <laughs> no, I think Mambu wants Kirk dead. Yeah, seems like it. But we do have a comment from frequent commenter Captain Alimar. He says, "Unintelligible Scottish singing." <laughs> He says, I really enjoyed the voice acting of Shatner and Nimoy this episode, and it's cool that the show got to be in command. Yeah. The pacing of the show is insane. In the span of five (laughs) seconds, they assault Spock with a ruby, drug the the away crew, and they all become old. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I thought of, of a bunch more plot holes, but Caleb said it best with their women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the review as always. I think I I commented back to him uh, the the pacing in these are crazy because you're taking yeah. like an hour long show and you're making yeah. it 30 minutes and it's like yeah. They just blitz through it, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. They do they assault they assault him with the ruby drug everybody and then everyone's old and then has headbands on in like three seconds (laughs) yeah yeah all right let's get into the review and so the opening has that kind of semi-long like enterprise shot and i was like "Uh oh more padding padding." Mm -hmm. it's like it's a full like 10 15 20 seconds until he's like captain's log (laughs) and the ship's like not even moving yeah but this time instead of quadro triticale it's quinto trilicale whatever it's yeah different it's like they have to say it and then everyone's like what what are you talking about? he's like it, it's wheat it's wheat <laughs> yeah. like, okay just say wheat then we we know what wheat is thank you <laughs> they're eating the what <laughs> the wheat <laughs> The wheat. Oh, yes, right. The wheat. wheat. (laughs) Oh. But yeah, they're literally bringing like grain to Sherman's planet again. So it's literally. I know. It's the same thing. It's the same plot. It's exactly the same. But I did think about you when he talks about in the captain's log the um, robot ships. And I thought, Mm. like, robot ships. I was like, that's very reminiscent of uh, the ultimate computer where there was that robot ship mm-hmm. and like the M5 like destroys it. And they're like, it's so fortunate that there's no, no one on that thing. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, like, 
maybe we see these again. <laughs> so I really, it was, this is a very simplification of Spock's thing that he says he's looking in the viewer and they're talking about the new, like, what are they talking about? Like the smaller Klingon ship or something. Like it's like a new Klingon ship. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's so interesting. And Spock's looking in the thing and he's like, he basically is like, he's like, no idea what it is. But man, is it beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> then it like shoots its thing at him. Yeah. And it looks just like all of the other Klingon bird of war yeah. ships. Yeah. So yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's nothing to write home about. The the part that I was laughing at is when they actually shoot that other like energy field thing. Oh yeah. Spock's like, hmm. Yeah, interesting. It will it will hit us in four seconds, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, thanks. Well, yeah, because that part because that's I think that's probably what made you laugh is He's like, yeah, oh, Energy Brave is hitting us in four seconds. And then Kirk's like, well, what can we do to get out of it? And he's like, well, I don't know. And then they get, then they get, like, <laughs> yeah. in mid-conversation, they get shot. Yeah. 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 Like, you don't really have uh, time to discuss options at four seconds, you know? No. And always, my 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 gripe always in Star Trek is they're like, they're, you're in space. It's like, it's vast, right? It's huge huge totally maneuverable to anything yeah and you got two ships facing each other and they're like oh god it's aimed right at us what do we do and we're like well we can't do anything sir we just have to take the brunt of it <laughs> just take it <laughs> so you know you couldn't i mean i get that they're big ships and you don't have like right, crazy right. movement but like hey man just maybe like just maybe like bank out of the way a little bit you know or yeah. or or go up <laughs> or you know can't do it. they're just like ah Hold it. Hold your position. <laughs> Otherwise, we can't see how powerful this new piece of weaponry is. Well, oh. sir, luckily, the, the ship wasn't at full power, so we didn't sustain too much damage. Oh. That could have been really bad. <laughs> yeah. I thought Kirk's like first Klingon, last Klingon line was pretty good. Yeah. He's like, the first Klingon who comes on the ship will be the last the Klingon last. on the ship. I did like that. Yeah, it was pretty good. I like how Cyrano got stuck in the buffer for a while. That was yeah. That was it reminded me. Was it last week or two weeks ago? And you were like, "Oh, I don't know how to." I think it was last week, and you were like, mm -hmm. <laughs> "Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't. I lost him. I lost him. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. Nope, nope. Mm, little more, little more. Oh, okay, got him. Whoa! <laughs> it's like, what does that do? What does the thing do, you know? No one knows. Nobody knows. Because that's the thing. They're always like, all right, energize. And like, wah. And they just pull the lever down and it just dematerializes you. Yeah. But like pulling somebody back up, you're, you're they're like honing in to his signal <laughs> or something. I don't know. It's weird. I it. Weird space magic. I love it so much. I wish he, I wish he got like pulled in finally onto the transport. And he was just like a mangled. <laughs> 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 it's still he's just full of tribbles he's like fused he comes in beans it as a giant mutilated tribble <laughs> i am sorry now trap up <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just i wish horrible things on cereal <laughs> <laughs> even when he beams in he's got like piles Piles of bullshit. He's like, oh yeah, these ones don't breed, and they're like, then why are there five hundred of them at your feet? Oh, I don't know. I just keep them. Yeah, I don't know. They're like, all right, we'll just open the door and let them all throughout the ship. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I, I, here's an idea: beam them back into space. How about that? <laughs> just, <laughs> just launch them back. And they're like, oh no, not tribbles again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and then, okay, here's two options for you. Get a flamethrower, launch him into space. I don't know. What, I don't know what to tell you. They make great pets, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they're very tasty as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought too the funny, really funny thing was in the in the Trouble with Troubles episode, and this one, 
like Kirk does just he does not care about the grain because there's that scene where no, he care. <laughs> he's like the the ship won't move. They've gotten hit with that like stasis beam from the Klingons and they can't move. Yeah. And he's like, ah. and he's like, take control of the, the grain chips and ram them into the Klingon ship. And then Spock's like, but that's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's and they're like, the grain. We're not. And he's like, I don't care about that. I don't care. He literally says the enterprise is more important than people on Sherman's planet getting like the food. And I was like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> we still control them. Affirmative, sir. Bring them back, Mr. Sulu. Have them ram the Klingon ship. Captain, you can't afford to lose that grain. I can afford even less to lose the enterprise. Yeah. He was more worried about the enterprise for sure. Yeah. There was, there was another point too. I mean, he, he yells at Cyrano about it pretty good. Oh yeah. yeah. The grain because he just hates him. But and his actions have shown that, like, eh, if we lose the grain, so what? I'm not losing to these Klingons, I'll tell you yeah, that. Right, right, right. Not... That's not that's not happening. <laughs> well, we were able to observe the Klingons' new weapon, so that that's worth at least two grain chips, in my opinion. <laughs> and again, these idiots on this planet, they're like, we don't have any food. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> then go to a different planet. <laughs> No. Nothing will grow here on the planet. I don't think I don't think you're understanding the spirit of Star Trek, Caleb. Yeah, it's yeah. you stay you on the planet yeah. no matter what, and you wait for either wait for help or you become the enemy. <laughs> um, you have figured it out. I don't think we have to watch any more Star Trek. I either wait out. for the Federation or I send out a distress signal, and anybody who comes to this planet, I eat them. I eat them. That's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I was given a bad planet. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wait for the Federation. Oh, I kill the Federation. <laughs> oh, I become the Federation. <laughs> the Federation yeah, 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 cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I can't tell you how many so episodes yeah. oh, and I'm, things. That's literally all it's going to be. I can't. Be. I like, can't oh, wait. We, we, we colonized this planet 200 years ago. We haven't visited. Let's go there. And they're like, eh, you've come to the planet. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to kill. <laughs> oh, her has a couple funny things. Oh yeah, yeah. Where she's like, "Oh, hey, Captain, this thing," and he's like, "Um, maybe cut communication with the Klingons first before you start talking about stuff." Oh, you know? Yeah. All right, this is the halfway point. So go down to the comment section and write wheat. <laughs> yeah, it's wheat. It's wheat. So we come back from the commercial and I really enjoyed the the reference to the trouble with Tribbles like specifically. Yeah. He's like the Cyrano Jones. He's like, how did you get off of K7? Oh, right. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, well, I found help. And then he's, you know, and then Kirk doesn't really believe him. And then he's like, but I found, he's like, because I have the natural Tribble Predator. Glamour. What? How he says it. Glam clock. Glamour. Glam glums. <laughs> then he shows this immediate, like, oh, this the only way this would ever be shown in Star Trek is animated. There's no way they would ever show that type of a thing in live action. That thing is such a impossible yeah, night, like nightmare. <laughs> tiny, like tiny little micro legs, legs like, yeah. huge. Like that would never work in reality. And it only eats tribbles. Tribbles. Fat. So, but again, that doesn't make sense. Because if he stole that thing from the Klingons and they're now after him, how did he have it on the space station to get rid of all the tribbles on the space station? I don't know. Right? It doesn't I think, it seem like he... Like getting more of them or something? I don't know. No, because the Klingon said, like, this was the first one they engineered, like, specifically. It was, like, beta. It was, like, their beta creature that they created. So, it's, like, so is he on his way from Klingon space with with this alien thing? Or has he already been on the space station and now they just tracked him down now? I, I don't understand. 
kind of implies that because Kirk, you know, like you said, Kirk's yeah. like, how did you get off the space station? Like, oh, oh, I found this glum glim thing and it works <laughs> very good. Well, it's like it's that, and it's also he says that he genetically engineered the uh, triples to just be become fat and not reproduce. Yeah. So he, it's like he did that. Yeah. So not only is he stealing this thing from the Klingons, he's genetically engineering the triples and somehow cleaning mm-hmm. the station to not let the Federation know like he's not doing his job. You know what I mean? Like he's doing all of these things. Yeah. 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 So the Federation is fine if you if you manipulate genomes of other things. Well, but if you do humanoid augments, gone straight to jail. <laughs> so, so, so the reality is, is he's just like you said, he's like a smuggler. He's a merchant. So he just uh-huh. works within the Federation. He's not like under Federation. He's yeah, not I mean, he does the Federation. Yeah, he does whatever he wants. But the right, thing is, right. that he should be in prison. That's my complaint. Well, probably, even even Kirk like. At oh, you point. you want it on three systems, and he's like, "Yeah, oh well." <laughs> <laughs> Even the ship that he was driving was probably like a stolen Federation ship, oh, you know. I'm sure. So then, the interesting thing that I thought that happens in this part was Spock makes a mistake. He says the Klingon ship seems to be veering off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's not. It and goes it's not. Text and it shoots at the green ship. And he's like, my mistake. They were not veering off. And I was like, oh, wow. What a dummy. Why would they be veering off? Oh, it looks like, well, Captain, they're uh, ignoring <laughs> us and going towards the grain ships. I bet they're leaving. I bet they're just leaving. <laughs> oh, nope. Oh. They blew up the grain ship. <laughs> oh, wow. It's almost like the RPG. I thought they were leaving peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> the other part that was uh, made me laugh was the Enterprise is getting hit. And all this stuff is happening to it. And they cut to. So already the issue, like you said, is like, why are the triples outside of the transporter room, right? They're Just not immediately. So it's because like, Kirk even says, like, seal the trans, you know, seal right. the doors, barricade the doors. Nobody cares. Yeah. So now it cut to, it shows like the ship getting rocked. And then all of a sudden, all the wheat's like everywhere in the hallways and the yeah. triple is getting fatter. And I was like, who secured all of that stuff? That it's just Nobody. like the ship gets rocked a couple times and it's just like, it's everywhere. Nobody secured it. Well, it spilled all over the place. Not even a strap in the bunch, you know? It's just it's the worst securement of cargo I've ever seen. What kind of contain containers are those where, like, if they tip, they tip just immediately burst more. open? It might as well have been like a salt shaker with this top off. Shouldn't they be like airtight if you're if you're oh. if you're if you're bringing actual like food products like shouldn't that stuff be like airtight shipment? Yeah. Oh god, the triples are everywhere. You remember like, the line he says? Kirk says, "How fat do these things get?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I engineered them to only get fat, Captain. Yeah, well, you engineered them well because they're getting real. fat. <laughs> I like the animation that they keep using of them like crawling on their feet. Oh, oh yeah. They keep using the same animation over and over. Yeah. I hate these things. So now, before we conclude our the review, let's do trivia. Tribble yeah. Oh, not again. All right, now you're overacting. The story for this installment started as a proposed episode for the original series of Star Trek, but was ultimately never produced for that series, mainly because third season producer Fred Freiberger hated the first Tribbles episode and its comedic (laughs) tone. (laughs) That's funny. I thought you'd enjoy that. (laughs) Hate it. I hate that drama. I hate that drama. It's too funny, I it. But yeah. I love Sharonel. Sharonel's great. If we could bring Sharonel back I mean, without Tribbles. 
Man, that would be great. So DC Fontana reached out to David Gerald to like get this the wheel going again to like get him to write this episode. So they jointly put much effort into organizing the episode story structure. So David offered, I went in and we blocked something out that we thought would work and we had a lot of fun with it. The writers chose to duplicate the narrative structure of the trouble with Tribbles with diplomatic yeah. goings on between Kirk and the Klingons occurring while the Tribbles are developing in the background. Breeding at a crazy <laughs> rate in the previous installment and now growing fat in this one. Yeah. Uh, David was wary that this episode might be too much like the earlier one, however. He commented, with this episode, you know the joke ahead of time, and you know what the punchline has to be. So I was always worried that we were going to be telling the same story over again. Yeah. David therefore concentrated on trying to take the humor of the animated episode to a step beyond that of its live-action predecessor. We still had fun, he related. We said, we still want to have fun and do it as a comedy, and let's see if we can take it beyond where we were before. Let's see if we can go to the next step. So the really funny thing is, too, um, or I guess the really interesting thing is this guy literally, David Gerald, I'm almost positive, he literally just was at Ticonderoga for Trek Conderoga. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. He was one of the visitors, like guests or whatever. You think he brought any tribbles with him? Yes, I'm sure he did. <laughs> Just <laughs> sure he out the audience, <laughs> like stuffed ones or something. So that that is really funny to hear. Like at least they were aware of the fact that, like, hey, so this is really like the same plot and the same punchlines, <laughs> and you guys realize like we're doing tribbles again, right? <laughs> Due to a production inconsistency, the tribbles in this episode are all pink. Unlike their varied color appearance in Trouble well, with Tribbles. Yeah, you're going to color each one of them different colored? I mean, <laughs> this was due to the fact that Hal Sutherland was colorblind and that to him, pink was consequently light gray. <laughs> wow. In the episode's co- audio commentary, David uh, Gerald refers to this error as one of the funniest jokes of the animated series. He also recalls when the cells came back. And we saw that the triples were pink. We all went, what happened? And that's where we found out that the guy who did colors for filmation was is colorblind. Yeah. And so we told <laughs> <laughs> And so we told him, no, the no triples are brown. It was too late. He had already assigned the colors. I mean, he had looked at the drawings and said, Well, these little furry creatures, they should be pink. The Klingons in this episode also wear pink for the same reason. In this case, their (laughs) tunics are that color. However, storyboard artist, character designer Bob Klein laid the blame on color director Irvin Kaplan. Pink equals Irvin Kaplan, shared Klein. Irv was in charge of ink and paint, coloring the various characters and props. And he would do it himself in his office. He would sit down with a cell and paint it. He was also referred to by many people there as the purple and green guy. You'll see it in a lot of scenes, purple and green used together. That was one of his preferences. He made dragons red. He made unif- He made costumes pink. It was all uh, Irv Kaplan's call. He wasn't <laughs> listening to anyone else when he picked colors or anything. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> that's really funny i didn't i didn't really notice i didn't pick up on the klingon uniforms being like wonky yeah they have uh they have like really weird color schemes immediately after working on the installment uh david gerald began work on the later animated star trek outing bem which we're going to watch at some point oh while writing that episode, DC Fontana arranged a meeting between David and a group of high school children who were visiting the halls at Filmation and were Star Trek fans, one of whom suggested to David that the animated series do a sequel to The Trouble with Tribbles. The child proceeded to explain his own idea for the proposed sequel before David interrupted to reveal that such an installment had already been written and was in production. The fan insistently continued relating his own idea and ignored David saying three times 
that such a sequel was in the works. So the writer finally excused himself and left. Following the initial airing of this episode, David learned from Gene Roddenberry that the child had sent a letter to NBC accusing the writer of plagiarizing the idea for the triple sequel. (laughs) David Uh posted a return letter explaining at length that he had not stolen the concept for the installment. He also asked that he not meet fans at Filmation in future, a request to which Filmation president Lou Scheimer, whatever, was extremely understanding. (laughs) I don't want to meet kids no more. How would that kid even know how to do that? I think he was just telling him what. But I mean, how would he know how to like send a letter of uh, <laughs> like plagiarism? Like, you plagiarized my idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, let me show you this picture. Let's see nothing. There it is. Oh boy. So there you go. <laughs> That's a drawing of them getting ready for the episode. It sure is. I like the little. F- very swoops that they drew on him. I thought that yeah. was cool. Yeah. I like Kirk's face in this picture. That's pretty good. It is pretty good. And then this picture is <laughs> this is David Garrell. Like the animators put him oh. in. The yeah. I did not I did not notice. Yeah. He's just like some transporter tech in one of the scenes. Well, they show the back view of uh what's his name? Uh, Kyle, was it Kyle? Oh yeah. They show him from behind, and they show his like mustache. And it was a mistake. It was that was like an error. Yeah, it was in the trivia thing that they didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, I just assumed it was you know Kyle because that's his job as transport right. guy. Right. All right, everybody. So stick around. We're gonna finish out the review, but we got a surprise for you when we're Uh-oh. done doing that. Better not be a guest appearance, I'll tell you that much. It better not be a guest appearance. So every like every little blip or so it cuts to Kirk and he's like shoving a, a fatter yeah. tribble out of his chair. Yeah, that part made me and made then me laugh. Spock says to him, he goes, Captain, don't you want to sit down? And then it cuts to Kirk and the tribble yeah. is like is huge, huge yeah. In the, in the thing. And he's like no. I think I'll stand. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I and I yeah, was that, like that literally made me laugh. Yeah, I just make a joke. <laughs> like, yeah. Aren't you going to sit down, sir? I think I'll stand. So the other really I only had two really other things that I thought were kind of funny was the fact that Koloff gets kind of tripled. Like he makes reference to the fact that like they're beaming the triples back over to the Klingon ship, and he kind of makes reference to it again. He's like, "Oh, not like this is happening. Not again. Like this is happening." Oh. And then they shoot the they shoot the <laughs> giant triple because it's apparently a colony of triples, whatever. The yeah, that works. And they shoot it, and then it explodes into a whole bunch of triples. And Don't. then he gets he gets covered. Koloth gets like covered in triples, and he's just yeah. like, uh. "Don't do that." ever again (laughs) (laughs) i like the part too where he's like talking to kirk on the screen and kirk's like all right i'll give you one more chance to let go of my ship and he's like kirk we've been through this before i'm not gonna do anything and kirk's like oh well your ship's already under my control and he's like what are you talking then he sees like the the triple goes like "Ah!" (laughs) triple (laughs) oh my god yeah yeah (laughs) The last thing I had is when Bones comes in with the the hypo spray and he's putting him in the thing and he's like, this will mm-hmm. make them stop growing. I forget what it does exactly. He they gives him something and, yeah. and he's like, oh. It turns him back into like small. Oh, triples. okay. So the <laughs> same thing that shooting him does. you know? And then he's like, oh, well, Bones, you didn't get this one in here in the Jeffries tube. Oh yeah. Like, yes, yeah so I it did. has to end. It has to end with Kirk getting covered in triples, you know. Yeah. And then it pours all around him and he goes, Someday I'll learn. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> I did like that. I thought that was a fun way to end the episode with Kirk getting covered in triples again. Cause you remember that was like my favorite <laughs> Yeah. My favorite part of the original. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The alien pilot still never talks. Oh no. 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want that prison app. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Yeah. Is the animated series the reason why we have the actual like Klingon logo? Because this is the first time I can remember like seeing it properly like displayed in the ship and on on the ship. There, that's a good point. I don't I don't remember if th- there's not too many other episodes or really maybe any at all that I didn't show you that didn't have Klingons in it. So yeah, you may be right on that actually. Yeah, I don't remember seeing it in live action. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. I I I just know like so you know I've painted Klingon ship like bird of prey ships and stuff for like little things but so I I know that like the recreated figures and ships and stuff have the symbol on it yeah yeah but this is the first time I remember seeing it like in the show specifically mm-hmm. like the triangle red yellow and green I think it is yeah yeah I think so that's that's interesting. I know they get more prominent later on because there's all sorts of different yes. clans and stuff. But yeah, well, like they like we've talked about before, they get much more into the Klingon stuff than they do anything else. Yeah, yeah, they leave all of the uh, Vulcan stuff and get into Klingon stuff. Right, right. So the part that I was remembering okay. was their like phasers and torpedoes are like not working from the beam okay and kirk's like well i don't know what else could we do and spock says well we could throw tribbles at them and and kirk's like i thought vulcans were incapable of making jokes and he's like they are (laughs) (laughs) well mr spock do you have any ideas we could always throw tribbles at them i thought vulcans didn't have a sense of humor we don't captain he literally was like suggesting like sure. launching tribbles <laughs> at the Klingon ship. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, That's that funny. Pretty, pretty funny. I do enjoy him getting covered with tribbles at the end. I thought that was good. Yep. And then what happens with that's kind of it, right? They don't ever it, just that line with Scotty, he says something to him like, I don't know, so t- any waves the the he makes oh. a he makes a joke where he's like, "A little triple is better than a big triple," or something like that. <laughs> and then Kirk like literally Kirk looks at the camera and he's like, mm, he like smiles or whatever. Yeah, I like to have the the Klingons like just specifically could not just like ask for their property back. They had to be like, "No, we want Cyrenal." And then when it finally came down to it, they're like, "You can keep." that idiot we just want our property and they're like oh all right well we'll just beam that over because we don't want it all right also yeah. like it can't eat the tribbles anymore because they're huge but yeah you can have it you can have it back we don't... <laughs> yeah, yeah. it won't take care of your problems but you can have it <laughs> that steve what does he call kirk he calls kirk like uh tin plated tin plated he done it. Like he did it to us again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he calls him tin plated whatever in yeah. the uh, other episode too. Okay, that concludes the review for us. But we've got a review from a guest, Uh-oh. a guest star. We know him Uh-oh. as our friend Andrew. But you <laughs> know him as Lieutenant Sova from the RPG. Yeah. Let's see what he has to say. I I hope he gives a review in his best Vulcan (laughs) impression. (laughs) Absolutely. So, a few of the things that I enjoyed. Let's go through in order what happened. Firing at the ship. I think they called it a scout ship. I don't know if it was because of the way they animated it, but it did seem like they couldn't hit anything. Like the Klingon ship kept firing over and over oh, yeah. again and was never able to hit it until the very last time when it destroyed the ship. 
So, but then again, yeah. that could just be the way they animated it. That's true. To sh- yeah, <laughs> to show like they weren't getting direct hits, but they were doing damage. It was like stormtroopers. <laughs> the um, the new weapon was a very interesting idea of using up all of the power, so you can't really do anything, but also you prevent the other ship from doing anything because they mm-hmm. couldn't use their warp engines, their weapons. Uh, the transporters were down. They even knocked out like their handheld phasers. Their hand phasers wouldn't even work. Yeah, it's but what I just said. The Andrew. cost of it is the <laughs> ship using the weapon couldn't really do. Any, they they could do minor things, but they couldn't really do anything. So it's a. I think if they use this that weapon in a, like a modern, more modern time, like in Picard, maybe. That would be interesting if they, because then obviously the ships have more power capability, so it mm-hmm. might be a f- far more form- formidable weapon. It is funny. Uh, obviously, bringing back the Jones, yeah. the dealer was a, was a nice touch, <laughs> especially they had was their it? banter of like, what are you doing here? Aren't you still supposed to be cleaning up K7? <laughs> Now, the idea of triples that don't reproduce, that is a very interesting thing because people like triples. They're they're one of those cute little uh, animal <laughs> companions that make noises and you feed them and they're not dangerous. Obviously, the mm. fact that they eat everything and reproduce to an outrageous degree is the reason why they're such a bad pet and they're dangerous to have because of how fast they reproduce. So, in theory, making it so that they can't reproduce would make would take away all the negatives. Mm. Obviously, because it's the main problem with the episode, Jones didn't take out their massive feeding problem. So you still had the feed the the fact that they eat constantly. You know, with the Enterprise having to to transport grain necessary to feed colonies. That are in desperate need of it you know you, when they brought up the <laughs> grain and the tribbles you knew that the tribbles would start eating tribbles with grain uh, i did like yeah. the idea of the tribbles growing and then it turned out that the tribbles weren't really growing there it was more of a colony so that was you know them smooshed together oh i think it was bones made the comment that the Klingon captain is quite a marksman, which goes back to <laughs> my question at the beginning, because if he was missing constantly, it's like, well, then you have a, you have something that doesn't make sense. Was he missing a scout ship that probably doesn't have very good maneuverability, or is he this an amazing marksman that can hit the engines of a ship and not destroy the ship? Obviously the green spilled per the battle, which you knew was coming. Uh, I did find it very funny with the captain chair where, where Kirk was constantly knocking the triple out of yeah. his chair and the triple kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger till finally he he just went, no, I'm just I'm not even gonna bother anymore because it was this gigantic triple. And my last thought is I like I really appreciated that they they brought back that last scene in or one of the last scenes in the first time where he was buried in tribbles. And so they ended this episode with him also being buried in troubles and making a comment of, I should have known, when am I going to learn? Yeah. I did I did think that was a very nice callback. Overall, I thought it was a very good uh, episode. Obviously, there are some issues, but it's such an old TV show that it can just be explained that, you know, not as good technology. You know, obviously, it's very expensive to have all of these super fancy cuts and everything to make like the battles make more sense so what they probably did was just have like two or three uh pictures that they kept cutting to yeah you know the the explosion on one side the explosion on the other and they just kept doing that over and over again to build the tension but like i said i thought it was a nice episode so thanks andrew that was fun having having andrew say what he liked about the tribbles absolutely we obviously would have liked him here to be joining the podcast live but he works in the morning yeah i was interested in what he was saying about the you know the being such a marksman and not hitting that scout chip in the beginning 
<laughs> yeah, that was really funny. But I don't know if it was hidden shields at first or if I don't they think were so. just like suppressing fire around the ship. So it's possible. Like, yeah, he was saying he wasn't sure if it was like a tactic that this guy was trying to do, or was it just like <laughs> just stupid like animation? Like they just yeah. don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to know what their intentions were. Yeah, I don't know. That is true. Yeah, no, it was good. I really appreciated his his input, and obviously, yep. if we can get anybody else from the RPG to join, like physically join, that'll be great. Yeah. If not, we might be able to get a couple snippets like that and have a little extra input. That'll be fun. But now we're going to do the thing everyone's been waiting for. Uh, it's the thing I forget about every week. Caleb. Caleb. <laughs> why does this happen? <laughs> why does this happen? every single time <laughs> i'm done with your questioning <laughs> <laughs> all right caleb who yeah, gets I... the erica ortegas award for being the most unlikable how oh, let me think about this for a minute oh zero <laughs> oh oh weird oh he's an idiot i hate his vest and I hate him as a person. So wow. there you go. Wow. <laughs> wow. And that's me sugarcoating it. So don't ask. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Who gets the Elizabeth Cutler Award for being most forgettable? Kyle. <laughs> the, the tiny little frame. Yeah. And he wasn't even supposed to be there. Uh Oops, we actually drew a mustache on this guy, but it's not Kyle. Don't, don't even ask. <laughs> He's not even on duty today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. It'd be even funny if it was like his day off and he had to like come in just to just to push oh. the slider up in. Mm-hmm. Like, um, Kyle, uh, this is um, this is Ensign Brian. Um, what way does the slider go on the transporter? Is he coming? He's like, uh, is he oh, coming yeah. back or is he going out? I'll 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 be right there. I'll be right there. <laughs> don't don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> what or who gets the Mugatu Award for being the mm. best alien of the episode? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's do the let's do Glomer. I lo- I thought that was I forgot he was even in the episode. <laughs> Slimer. Slimer. Yeah, I thought he was cool. Thought he was cool. Yeah, it's a cool it's a cool thing. It's just it's very obviously never would be could be made and it'd Glimer. have to be like a puppet on a string, you know. Right. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, who gets the Trip Tucker Award for being the MVP? I want to say the Klingon captain was the MVP this episode. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to kill Cyrano. Because he was trying to kill Cyrano. He was trying to stop the infection and the spreading of Tribbles. And he was willing to put his own ship and crew on the line and take on the Enterprise just to get rid of Tribbles. And it, you kind of get maybe the you get maybe implied that he was in charge of the glomer thing, right? Like, like it was under his yeah. direction. Yeah. Yeah. He was trying to get back his science, science property. Yeah. I like so, it. You know, he's the MVP. He was fulfilling his own mission this week. Yeah. And we just happened to be seeing it from the enterprise crew's perspective. That's right. I mean, so- he even came into like, un- you know, federation space to do it so i mean he was it takes guts man it takes guts (laughs) so you know what klingon captain you sir are the mvp (laughs) don't you ever do that i'll start a whole war (laughs) for this glum glum (laughs) what gets the shran award for being the best action sequence I kind of like when the two grain ships come in from the side. You see, like, the, the Klingon ship doesn't have enough power to, like, hold all three of them. Okay, yeah. Again, it's always one of those things where in, in Star Trek, it's like they have forward shooting 
things only. Yeah. And it's like, hey, if you just swooped under and then came up behind him, you wouldn't get like no. shot by that thing. No. Yeah, so let's do that. I like that scene. Yeah. yeah, definitely the older show has a harder time understanding space. You know, like they don't understand it because they hadn't gone to the moon yet, really. So it's like right. they don't really. It's not like they don't a part understand of the... having it. They're still they're still thinking it's like being in a submarine where you can only go one direction. Right, right. Like maneuver it, one direction. And it's like obviously by seventy three, they've a lot has happened. But the reality is, is the cartoon series is just copying the format yeah. of the original series. They're not really no. trying to break new ground with the show other than like make it crazier because animation allows for them to have like ridiculous looking aliens now. Yeah. Okay. What gets the NX award for some sweet ship stuff? I like the Klingon's new weapon. Okay. Yeah. I think that's an interesting concept. It seems like it would really be most practical if you had two Klingon ships. Mm. One is one's job is just to use up your power and hold the other ship in stasis. Yeah. And then have one attacking ship. I think that would be the most. That'd be pretty bad. You know, it's pretty funny because you think about it like you're to your point. Exactly. Like that would be a pretty like Andrew was saying, like a formidable opponent weapon and weapon. Yeah. And it's like, okay, two, sh- two Klingon ships should be like, Oh crap. Like he's going to hold us. And then the other one's either going to shoot us or board us. And it's not going to go well. No, it's not going to be good. Yeah. 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 It's a pretty overpowered weapon, honestly, but, but <laughs> if there's only one ship and you know, right. We, yeah. They're draining their power to hold you in place. Then they also can't do anything. So it's kind of like a stalemate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like two metapods using Harden. <laughs> <laughs> what or who gets the Porthos Award for being the cheesiest thing of the episode? Cheesiest thing in the episode is that they're bringing more grain <laughs> the to, the idi- to the idiots. Obviously, they don't know how to farm. Yeah. With all the grain they had last. Well, did they even get grain last time? How long? No, how I, long? <laughs> I, I think uh, I think all of the triples ate it. So I don't know if they. I don't remember what happens at the end. So of now the, this is like years later. So they're already <laughs> dead anyway. They're, it's got to be like dead. two years later. Yeah. So the colony's dead. They're just they're just all dead. They're like, hey, so we're finally bringing that grain we promised you. And they're just like <laughs> slightly all different. skeletons down there. <laughs> the thing I was thinking what would be really funny is the fact that like I want to look at it from this perspective where they're just like. Hey, can you, can you like bring more of that green? We ate it all. It was so yummy. We've been eating it like cereal. <laughs> We've been eating and they're it. Like, like you were supposed to plant it. <laughs> You're like, what was that? No, we live on a planet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you were supposed to plant it, cultivate it, grow it. Oh, <laughs> oh we ate it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, like, bring more? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) So, as I said before, we just went to the lowest of lows. Let's go to the highest of highs. What gets the Enterprise Award for being the best scene of the episode? Kirk getting covered in triple. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't think I'd see it again. Nope. But I saw it again. I just like that shot, like, the way it's filmed. And he's like, no, you missed one. (laughs) <laughs> no i didn't yeah, he oh says, my god <laughs> <laughs> i tell you that would be worth seeing in live action right of of shatner looking yeah. at jeffrey's tube and being like oh bones you missed one and he's like no i jim no i didn't and then it's just like oh <laughs> so, they're so heavy <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. at least you didn't have to have four, you know, four crewmen up there throwing them down the chute. They would have just had like a big. Would it would have been great is have like an air cannon and just shoot them through the, <laughs> <laughs> like through the Jeffrey's tube. Yeah, just a like giant, a t-shirt, like a t-shirt, big like t-shirt cannon. They're shooting yeah. them out there. 
full. <laughs> there's like a <laughs> there's like a big room full of the tribbles, and it's like a vacuum tube, you know, yeah. like hooked up, and he's just holding the vacuum tube at the top of the at the Jeffrey tube, yeah. and the other end they're just sucking them up. Boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs> it's actually like hidden Kirk, you know. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Well, that oh. was more tribbles, more troubles, Mo tribbles. Mo troubles. Mo problems. So go down to the comment section and write what you thought of the episode. Let us know if you thought it was nice to see a retelling of the trouble with tribbles. Did you find it funny? Did you find it interesting? Did you not? Did you hate it? Did you think it was stupid? Let us know. Down below. <laughs> Next week's episode will be our last season one episode of the animated series. And we're going to watch The Slaver Weapon. Ooh, Mud's Woman Part 2. No, no, no. <laughs> That's next week's episode, so stick Mud's to Mud's Lady Friend. No, 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 no. So stick, <laughs> stick around to catch that episode. So as always, you can like the video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, share it with all your friends and family and Trek enthusiasts. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode and ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss any episode on the channel like this, Star Trek history, or anything else that may appear. Yeah. But before you go, make sure you jump on over to Caleb's channel. Caleb has a prop channel where he makes very cool, awesome, awesome, great things. <laughs> so go over there and give him a watch. But Caleb, let us know what you may have in the pipeline. So I have a alien video coming out or came out already. A couple weeks ago, I made the pulse rifle. This current week, I made the actual alien head and I put it in the ceiling in my basement. Nice. So it looks like he's sneaking, uh, sneaking on, you know, finding you. And then I have one more alien video coming out next week. And what is coming down the pipeline for the nerd holes? I think we will have our debut of our nerd holes anthem should be mm. no the next no. day. I think mm. day or two, yeah. Tuesday that comes out Tuesday. Yeah, so we put together a little song, little anthem. It's pretty great. We've been uh, singing it and quoting the lyrics. At some point, our our review of Empire should be out, too. Yeah. That's right. Will sent me the Star Wars schedule, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're working on that. And for on this side of things, yesterday was the live stream, so if you oh, missed yeah. it, that'll that be went very there. good. We loved it. It went really great. <laughs> we had so much fun. Yeah, and if you weren't there, you missed it. Hey, Hey, Will, you remember when remember when that thing happened? I do. I yeah, do me too. That that hilarious. Yeah. 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 So if you missed it, that'll be up on the channel at some point. So keep an eye out for that. That's and why you should, the bell. And you should definitely watch it because we were working on something that was fun. So, you know. That's true. We were working on this. This. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Go over to Caleb's. Give him a like. Give him a watch. Give him a comment. Give him a subscribe. You decide. Yeah. Tell me if you want to see Flintstones. Yeah. Right. Right. If you want to see Flintstones. That's all. I want. made a giant Flintstone vitamin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All Caleb wants right now is for you to go over to his alien content videos and just write. Yeah, this like, isn't Flintstone. Flintstone. We want Flintstones. We want Flintstones. That's what we want to see. No. All right, Caleb, that's been the Retrek Review. Send us out. All right, M5. Take us home. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>
but there's like tons of like little like balls. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, I put know. the balls and him together or? <laughs> <laughs> I think his uh I think his outsides <laughs> his insides are outside. I don't know. Should I just put those back in him? <laughs> I think he I think he's dead. I think he's dead. <laughs> Damn it, Jim, he's a triple. He's a triple, not a man. <laughs> <laughs> he just Cyrano just shows up and he just starts throwing up hair. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Just what you would have wanted. You would have been They're like, breathing in me. <laughs> <laughs> They're eating his insides and getting bigger and he explodes. Right? Oh, oh They're eating God. his organs. They're like... getting bigger and then they rush <laughs> his body out of the cavity. Yep. That's what you wanted. You would have uh, you would have taken back everything you've ever said about any Star Trek show and said this is your favorite episode. I know you would have, because that's what happened to Cyrano Jones. <laughs> Oh my god. That made me like lightheaded. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate him. I hate him so much. Uh yeah. Wow. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if you'll find a worse Cyrano Jones. No. Uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> 